Now, while Great Danes have many redeeming qualities, one of these is not how much they drool. Now, while they're not the world's greatest droolers, they can certainly hold their own in this regards, and if you're new to the breed, it's something that can really throw you off and take some time to get used to. So in this video, I'll be talking about why Great Danes drool, uh, what you can expect from how much drool there is, and also ways to deal with it. Uh, so with that, let's jump into the video. Now to jump right into it, the major reason why Great Danes drool many than other breeds that you may be really used to really comes down to the structure of their face. Now, if we can get Gus here to cooperate here and kind of lift our face up for it, the major reason for this is that it, they have more of a square-shaped jaw and also loose lips. Now, these folds in the lips will kind of vary in terms of how much they have from dog to dog. Um, but really what these, this, this allows to happen is that saliva is able to collect in the, the lip and the cheek area here and then just simply fall out, hence the, the appearance of drooling. So dogs that have tighter faces, be they Great Danes or otherwise, are able to really contain that saliva and just swallow it back down instead of just having it collect inside the mouth and then just simply run out onto our, our couch here or the floor or the table or wherever else that it is that they might be. Now, in many cases, you'll notice that the worst of this drooling usually happens after they've been having some exercise and playing some fun, or maybe they've just been eating and drinking where there's kind of the introduction of extra fluids that you know doesn't always make it all the way down their throat. So it once again will pull in the cheek and the mouth area here and just simply run back out. Uh, but all in all kind of differences from one dog to another, that's the main reason why we see them uh, drool a lot more than other breeds. Now, aside from the shape of their face, I'll kind of break this into two different categories, one being kind of normal situations that once again lead to more drooling as well as kind of your abnormal conditions. Now, the first one that I already talked about is really the shape of their face. This is genetically predetermined. There's nothing you can do to change the shape of your dog's face. So uh, what you've got is what you've got here and that kind of drool factor can't be controlled. Uh, but if we look at kind of the other things that are very normal for a great teen to kind of, you know, cause more drool than is normal are things like anticipation. So let's say we've got a tasty meal on the way or they can smell something delicious or you've just talked about going for a W-A-L-K or going to the dog park. Didn't want to say it out loud because Gus will get pumped here and probably start drooling on me. Um, but these things that cause excitement, you know, that's another factor that will uh, cause their salivary glands to release more fluids in anticipation of these factors resulting in, once again, more drool here. Now, another factor, knowing that our Great Danes here are a giant breed that are prone to overheating, you know, the other primary reason for drooling, it actually has to do with temperature regulation. So as they release fluids from the body, this allows for evaporative cooling to, ha to take effect, which essentially allows them to cool off. So if you see them sitting outside in the hot sun or just a generally hot day and they're, they're panting and they're drooling a lot, or maybe they're licking themselves and just really soaking themselves, it's because that allows them to help cool down. So obviously, if your dog's overheating, just go ahead and get them out of the sun, let them go inside, cool off, and drink some water to kind of really cool off there because we certainly don't want them to, you know, get overheated. Now, in addition to these kind of first couple measures, we also see situations like motion sickness. So some dogs, if they're not used to going for a car ride or other forms of motion, may lead to motion sickness that also enhances the amount of drooling. So obviously we can't really control how, you know, if they get motion sickness or not. So you can always try to practice these types of things like going for really short car rides once a week, every couple days to kind of get them used to that motion. So that way it hopefully prevents it in the future. So that's just a kind of couple scenarios here that I would kind of call normal drooling for a Great Dane. And ones that you really should really, really shouldn't be always worried about, just kind of, you know, things that you can expect and a couple of things to remediate, you know, if you do want to, you know, ease the drooling for them. All right, so while those cover the kind of normal conditions in which you can expect your Great Dane to drool, there are also what I would just refer to as kind of your abnormal conditions. And this really is kind of a bundle of many different uh, medical cases that are referred to as a tylism, which is a fancy word for hypersalivation. So you can think of this as, you know, if you were to kind of take a baseline of how much your dog drools on an average day, if all of a sudden they were drooling two or three or four times as much, just way, way more than normal, that would be a case of hypersalivation, which could indicate that they have some kind of oral disease, some kind of neurological disease. There's really a huge laundry, laundry list of things that could be at play here that would be kind of the causative factor for why your Great Dane is drooling so much more than they previously used to. Um, so this is one reason why it's important that you kind of pay attention to your dog to understand, you know, what's normal for them. So that way, if you see this case where they are drooling a lot more, it's something that you'll want to keep an eye out for. Now, in addition to looking out for a lot more drool, some other kind of factors that might also occur at the same time would be if they just suddenly had a loss of appetite, they were really having just different uh, behaviors that they didn't usually do, or perhaps when they are eating, if they're only eating with one side of the mouth, or if they were regurgitating or vomiting their food, they're just even pulling up their face. These types of things in combination, you know, with this excess drooling could be a sign that there's one of these larger factors at play 
And that would be a great indicator that you should probably take your Great Dane, great Dane into the veterinarian to kind of have them inspected and try to figure out what's going on. Once again, there's so many different things that really could feed into these types of medical conditions that it's really impossible to pinpoint from home. So it's better just to keep a watchful eye out. And if you see the, the drool really just go through the roof here, so to speak, and these other types of you know scenarios or changes in behavior, that's a good sign that there's something probably wrong. And it's better just to go ahead and take them out at that point. Now, when it comes to how much you can expect your Great Dane to drool, this honestly is going to vary dog by dog. You know, the one thing that I've kind of alluded to previously is that, you know, Great Danes that have a little bit tighter faces in terms of a little bit less cheek there, you know, they're going to have the, the ability to kind of swallow more of the saliva that is naturally produced and therefore have less of it run out of their mouth. So it's just a genetic factor when you kind of look at a Great Dane that they, uh, those with tighter faces may drool less than others. Um, another kind of just generally common theme that really seems to be play at hand is, you know, our really large males that are just, you know, up there around 200 pounds and above. If we look at, you know, those that tend to just do a lot of drooling just kind of continuously, they tend to be the kind of common culprit here. Um, part of that, frankly, though, just could be part of temperature regulation. You know, big dogs overheat faster just because it's more work to move around their bodies. So perhaps it's why they always have that kind of perceived extra drooling. And in other cases, these really large Great Danes are kind of a little bit closer to their mastiff brethrens and have a little bit looser lips. Also kind of mean they're going to drool a little bit more. So the key answer here really is that there's no way to guess and say, okay, your Great Dane's going to drool 16 ounces today and that'll be it for every single day. You know, it's going to vary every dog by every dog. So the more important thing is that you kind of understand, you know, what's normal for your Great Danes that way. If you see a large increase in drooling along with other different factors, that that's probably a sign that something's gone wrong. And you need to have them kind of taken to the very end to kind of figure out what's going wrong before, you know, if something bad happens to them, which we would certainly never want, right, guys? All right, now the all-important question of what can we do about drool? Um, there's really only a couple things you can do here, knowing that if we just look at the baseline amount of drool, it really depends on the structure of their face. Um, other certain genetic factors that really control how much saliva production they have. There's not a whole lot you can do about those. Uh, but if we just think about general tips and practices, you know, where we keep Gus's food bowls, I have a very large kind of plastic mat that sits underneath of it, knowing that every time she eats and drinks a bunch of water, that a lot of that water is just going to kind of run out and spatter around, that that mat will at least help collect the worst of it, at least immediately around the food bowls, so that way it's not ruining the hardwood floors there. Um, so that's kind of one situation where you kind of have this type of protective coating around the food and water bowls, knowing that that's going to be the production of kind of a lot of you know, excess fluid flowing out of their mouth. And the same could also be just simply where you place their food bowls. So perhaps putting it on a, a floor surface in a particular room where you're not as worried about it. So in our case, you know, hardwood floors are probably the worst case scenario for having drool and water just kind of always dripping on them constantly day in and day out. But that's just kind of what we got to work with here. But if you have a room that is perhaps tiled or has like some kind of laminate flooring or just something that's going to be a little bit better water resistant, that's a great selection for kind of where you choose to place the water bowls knowing that that's where a lot of the worst perceived drilling will occur. Now, in addition to where you place the bowls and using this mat, the other kind of just go-to that every great Dane owner learns over time is just, you just got to have a couple towels handy. So keeping one, many people actually will tie them to the doorknobs in these kind of key areas. One being maybe in a doorknob or an area by the food bowl. So that way, as soon as they finish a meal, or as soon as they finish drinking a bunch of water, you can take a big, you know, towel and just kind of quickly wipe the worst of that water off their face. Uh, but also, you know, areas like near your back door. So if your Great Dane is able to go out in the backyard and, you know, run around, that type of exercise tends to produce a lot of kind of extra saliva and, you know, foam and just kind of gunk coming out of their mouth. So keeping one of those near that, that entryway or that back door, so that way as they start to come inside, you can kind of give the face a quick wipe, is also a great way to kind of get it cleaned up. So those are just the three things that really make a big difference. Uh, once again, because a lot of it is genetically predetermined, you know, there's only so much you can do here. Obviously, we don't want to dehydrate them and give them less water than they need to try to you know reduce the drilling because that's going to cause other downstream factors that would neg negatively impact their health so we certainly don't want to do that all right so before gus soaks my pants on the couch here and any further drool from her relaxed state we're going to go ahead and wrap up this video we hope that you found it helpful if you haven't already please go ahead and give the video a like as it really helps us out and subscribe to our channel and until next time stay dandy my friends mm -hmm.